Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Nerdy Multiverse and yet another breakdown for Season 2 of The Bad Batch. Today, we will be breaking down Episode 6, titled Tribe, where we see the return of a familiar face. The episode begins as the Bad Batch fly onto the Vanguard in the Marauder, which is their ship, and the Vanguard seems to be a big spot for different sorts of smuggling, trading, and whatnot, so basically it's a sort of black market, and the station is being looked over by or controlled by a force of Axis droids. The Batch are here to sell off some forged chain codes, which is a type of ID in Star Wars, forging them to make sure that the Empire cannot catch on to who is actually using them and their real identity, and so that whoever is using them can bypass the Empire and its security. Hunter, Wrecker, and Tech go to sell the chain codes, while Omega and Echo stay back and watch over and guard the ship. While Hunter, Wrecker, and Tech are selling the chain codes and Omega and Echo are back at the ship, Omega starts to suspect that something is not right here and ends up wandering off after Echo goes in the Marauder to start it back up. After wandering off, she ends up running into two of the Axis droids beating on a young Wookiee, and this Wookiee is none other than Gunji, a beloved character from the Clone Wars, who we first saw in The Gathering, where Gunji and other younglings went to Ilum with Ahsoka and Yoda to gather kyber crystals so that they could finally make their own lightsabers. When Gunji created his lightsaber, he designed it by using a Brylark tree wood hilt, which was said to be a very rare choice for a lightsaber hilt, but also it is the only type of wood said to be as strong as metal, which is also sort of calling back to his homeworld and its sort of style and culture that he longs to return to. After his few brief appearances in the Clone Wars, we never really saw him again and didn't have any answers as to what may have happened to him until now, of course, as we can see that he did in fact survive Order 66 and must have gotten captured at some point in between then and is now being held here on the Vanguard. Anyways though, Omega ends up stopping the droids from beating on Gunji and her and Gunji get out of there while more of the Axis droids end up showing up and alert the leader, after him and the other droids check the chain codes that they are buying from the batch. They all go out to confront Echo, Omega, and Gunji, and one of the droids mentions that Gunji has a buyer, and to me, this could mean that the Empire were looking to get a hold of him, or possibly just some other client that we have yet to know about. Wrecker, Tech, and Hunter end up coming out too, and they get into a firefight with the droids to save each other, after Gunji uses a force to take back his lightsaber that was strapped to one of the droids. The Batch end up taking out the droids with all of their respective skills, while Gunji uses his lightsaber to deflect their blaster bolts and take them down as as well, and they end up getting on their ship and getting out of there. While on the Marauder, Omega tries to bring Gunji some food as he is sitting in the back of the ship all by himself curled up. But when Hunter and the others approach, he gets very defensive and growls at them, which he also did to Echo earlier in the episode as well. This is because, as I explain as well in the episode, the Batch are all clones and of course Gunji being a Jedi means that he does not trust them whatsoever due to the events of Ori 66, where he may have witnessed a master of his or some of his friends be killed by the clones, wherever he may have been when the order was given by Palpatine. He ends up coming around with the Batch and trusting them, and they end up talking about bringing Gunji back to home, which means back to Kashyyyk, and they end up heading there right away. As they get out of hyperspace and enter the planet's atmosphere, Echo mentions that he is detecting a lot of fire and smoke, meaning that the Empire has already started their takeover of this planet, and if you remember playing Fallen Order by that time in the game, they completely took the planet over and eventually enslaved a majority of the Wookiee species as we saw in the Solo movie. They finally land on Kashyyyk after flying over the luscious and beautiful forests and landscapes of the planet that we have not seen in a very long time. Making their way through the forest of the planet, they end up getting to an area that is seemingly covered in webs, and Wrecker takes out what I think is his vibroblade to cut through the webs. As they end up getting approached by the ones that made these webs, spider-like creatures crawl down the trees and close in on them. This spider-like species are known as the Kinrath, and they have only been seen in Legends and were meant to be in the Clone Wars at one point, but ended up being in one of the deleted arcs of the series. The Batch get ready to fight them, but Gunji stops them as they only attack those that seem to be threatening them, and Gunji ends up using either Beast Control to calm them down and send them off, the same force ability that Ahsoka used in her Tales of the Jedi episode, and what Anakin can use on the Reek at the Battle of Geonosis. Otherwise, he just uses the force to communicate with them. They get to the top of a hill and see the forest area below is covered in smoke and they head down into the area where they end up coming across a burnt down area and part of a village. In a pretty sad and emotional scene, Gunji ends up falling to his knees and just taking in the destruction of his home 
world to heart. But Omega comes to comfort him and tells him that the Empire destroyed her and the Batch's home too, calling back to the destruction of Topoka City on Kamino from the first season. And she promises him that they will find his people, where they end up hearing something in the area and they close in on the noise, discovering a force of Trandoshans who are holding a Wookiee hostage. The Trandoshans are in possession of what Hunter says are Imperial tanks that they are using to burn the forest down. And these look like a sort of repurposed AAT tank that the Separatists used during the Clone Wars. Now, the Trandoshans being here on Kashyyyk by what seems to be the Order of the Empire, as they are later accompanied by Imperial clones, meaning that the Empire most likely did hire these Trandoshans to help them hunt down the Wookiees here, take them captive, and burn their homes to the ground. This would be the perfect choice by the Empire, in case you did not already know, Wookiees and Trandoshans have a very long history of conflict and the two species practically hate each other, as Trandoshans occasionally hunt down Wookiees for sport and to take their pelts as trophies. We saw some of this in the Clone Wars during the Padawan Lost arc, where Ahsoka and some others got caught up in the mix of a Trandoshan hunting party where they ended up helping the Wookiees out and meeting Chewbacca. Now, continuing with the actual episode again, Gunji ends up confronting the Trandoshans and him and the Batch end up taking them and the tanks down, which causes one of the Trandoshans to use the tank, which starts the forest on fire. So they end up spending some time digging to stop the fires from spreading. And after putting out the fires, the Wookiee that Gunji freed from the Trandoshans earlier returns with some other Wookiees and they are all on the backs of some sort of giant tiger sort of creature that I do not believe we have seen before. They bring Gunji and the Batch to where they are staying and they end up meeting with more of the Wookiees including their tribe leader named Yana. Reuniting with each other, Yana, Gunji, and the other Wookiee put their heads together, which is a sort of greeting or gesture we have seen Wookiees do before, like when we saw Chewbacca do it in Solo with Sagwa. When she does it with Gunji, he sort of hesitates or does not know what he is supposed to do at first, as he has never gotten an actual good amount of time with his own people, as at a young age, those that are Force-sensitive are taken by the Jedi to become one. Venomo, the leader of the Trandoshan Force here and some clones, discover the attack from earlier, and they end up finding the lightsaber marks from Gunji's lightsaber. The clones insist on alerting the Empire, which would in turn most likely alert some Inquisitors to come to Kashyyyk, but Venomo says that there is no need as he will find the Jedi first, and he ends up offering his Trandoshans 100 Wookiee pelts to whoever finds the Jedi first. Again, showing that everlasting conflict between the two species and how Trandoshans literally just hunt Wookiees for trophies. After spending some time and discussing with the Wookiees and their tribe leader, the Batch is to stay and help them out, as Echo says that the Wookiees were allies to them for many years during the Republic and the Clone Wars, so they have to be allies for the Wookiees now. The Wookiees go out to the trees, and Gunji joins them as they do one of their traditional sort of spiritual practices as they speak to the trees asking them for help and guidance on what to do here as the trees on Kashyyyk are often viewed as sentient beings. Hours pass and it is now nighttime and the Empire's forces are closing in on their location. And the Wookiees finish speaking with the trees and Gunji tells the Batch that the trees have a plan and the trees are there to be their allies. Sort of reminding me of the Ents from Lord of the Rings. They end up ambushing the Imperial clones and Venomo's Trandoshan forces using different tactics and all of the different creatures of the planet basically coming together to defend their home. Home, sort of like how the Ewoks did in the Return of the Jedi. And they push their enemies into what they call the Nest, as they bring them into this area and hit the trees, sending a sort of signal or message to the Kinrath that we saw earlier in the episode to come out and swarm the Empire's forces and the Trandoshans, taking them all out. While Venomo sees Gunji and goes after him with his flamethrower, something that a lightsaber can't really block attacks from and the flames from it making Wookiees very vulnerable, as it is sort of their weakness as we have seen others use fire different times to take down Wookiees like when Boba Fett did this to Chewbacca in the comics. Gunji ends up luring Venomo into the nest area as well, and as a Jedi would, he flips around the Trandoshan's attacks, disables his weapon, and leaves him to his fate as the Force wills it. As Kinrath come crawling down the trees, surrounding him and wrapping him in their webs and taking them with him, most likely to be their next meal. With the battle finally over, Gunji deactivates his lightsaber, meets up with Omega, and they head back to the Batch and the rest of the Wookiees. 
The next day arises and the Batch and the rest of the Wookiees that they fought alongside are practically celebrating their victory here and we can see that Gunji and Omega are both speaking and praying to the trees. Hunter and Yana watch over them doing this and Yana says that when the young ones leave, the trees weep and when they end up returning, the trees sing and that Gunji has now found his new home and someday, hopefully, everyone will find their own path. Sort of hinting or foreshadowing that the members of the Bad Batch sometime down the line hopefully will be able to live freely and go on their own paths, or so they hope. Hunter says that they are just children but they don't actually get the chance to actually be kids and enjoy their youth, as war has stripped them of that, hoping that someday there will be a time and a place where the youth do not have to grow up in such times and have to worry about living in a war, which is where the episode ends off. Overall, this was such a fun episode that had tons of beautiful aspects to it, especially with returning to Kashyyyk, and it was a pretty emotional and sad sort of episode as well. I loved having those Clone Wars sort of vibes and seeing the return of Gunji finally after so long and I can say that I am very excited to see where his character ends up going next. This was definitely one of my favorite episodes of the series so far and yet another great entry. And I personally think that this episode is easily a 9 out of 10. But I would like to hear all of your thoughts on the episode though so make sure to leave them all down below. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed our breakdown on this episode don't forget to give it a like and with that being said we will see you all the next time that we go through and explore the nerdy multiverse.